Hello and welcome to uh, our brand new series of small group sessions, uh, starting today looking at uh, the book of Philippians. Philippians is a book uh, in the New Testament, a letter written by Paul to the people of Philippi. Philippi was a, a busy and bustling uh, Roman city. Um, it's a letter written by Paul while he was in prison as an encouragement back to the people in Philippi that he'd visited earlier on in his ministry. Uh, a letter to encourage them um, to keep being obedient to God, to keep encouraging one another in the face of all sorts of opposition to the Christian faith. Um, and it's a letter that we're going to unpack in stages over the next three sessions uh, to take us up to the end of the year. So, um, in this first session, we want you uh, now in your groups together um, to read from Philippians chapter 1, Philippians 1, uh, 12 to 27, and then Catherine and I will share some thoughts to unpack that a little further in a few moments. So uh, in that passage, there are all sorts of um, famous verses that you'll have um, heard read before, um, but also some other verses that um, maybe are a little more obscure, maybe that you uh, have sort of passed over when you've read before. Um, Catherine, do you want to help us just unpack some of what's in that, uh, that passage a little? Yeah, us? yeah. I think um, the, what we find, particularly in verses 12 to 14, is how um, for Paul he recognizes that he, he was imprisoned in order to stop him sharing the gospel. Yeah. But actually, what he's found, a result of his imprisonment, has actually resulted in further sharing of the gospel. So, so I think we see something there about, about Paul trying to recognize that, um, that, that God's will, God's purposes, will still be realized even in the midst of less than ideal circumstances. I think that's really interesting because the, for the Philippians, that sort of opposition wasn't unusual. Yeah. It, was the, it was a very Roman city. Yes. Um, my understanding is that it was actually full of like, retired soldiers, people who were really, really committed to the Romans. Mm -hmm. And so when Paul comes in and starts to preach mm -hmm. Jesus, there's all sorts of opposition mm -hmm. that comes. Yeah. But in, in spite of that, there's also this really committed, faithful yeah. Christian community that emerges, yeah. a really resilient community actually because it's born yeah. out of yeah. real opposition. Yeah, and, and so it's really important that I think Paul speaks words of encouragement to them yeah, and yeah. that there is a lot of encouragement in Philippians um, because actually for the early Christians, um, uh, it, was, it was really, really tough. Mm. And, and so that there needed to be that sense of digging deep, digging in and recognizing that God is able um, even in the midst of, of really tough things that they would be going through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I think I feel that there's a lot within this passage that um, speaks to us about motivation, what motivates us. So when we, when we look further on, so when we look at kind of verse 15 onwards, then Paul actually speaks into what people's motives are for sharing the gospel. Um, and, and I think we could do some interesting things with what we see here in these next few verses. Um, one of the things that we could end up doing is, is feeling that Paul's saying, actually, motives don't, whatever your motives are, it doesn't matter mm. because God will use things anyway. Now, I think we can say, yeah, God will use things anyway. Yeah. Um, Paul speaks into that in Romans. You know, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Mm. Um, but I don't think what we have here is that motives aren't important. So I thought it would be good if we had a conversation mm. um, today, Sam, around, around motives and around what Paul might actually be trying to say to us here. So, so I wondered whether, um, whether you had any thoughts around what, what's important for us as Christians in the inside, mm. not just yeah. in what's it's, played out. It's interesting you bring up that verse in Romans because that verse is one that people, I think, in a similar way to this, see as something that they either use to explain away all sorts of things Absolutely. or really struggle to get their heads around. Yeah. And again, this whole conversation around motives is one that's 
this is not a black and white thing. This is this there's, this is all in the grey, isn't it? Really. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the thing that holds the whole letter to the Philippians together is um, the the sort of opening. I think it's ten or eleven verses of. Philippians chapter 2, which yeah. is that really famous um, and really beautiful, actually, poem, really, um, of Paul's about the person of Jesus yeah. um, uh, and speaks into the heart and the character and ultimately the actions of Jesus. Um, and and what you, as you read through Philippians, um, each section sort of picks up a little bit of that poem um, that Paul writes. And one of the things that Paul talks about in that section is having the same mindset yes. as Jesus, having the same heart, having the same mind as Jesus in all that we do. And I think it's important we hold that in our heads as we read this passage about motivation because yeah. in Jesus we have a framework for what our motivation should be. Yes. Um, he, he came with a heart full of love and compassion for others. Ultimately, that was his motive behind sharing the good news. It wasn't so that um, everyone would follow him to boost his ego. Mm -hmm. It was so that everyone would follow him so that they could know that they were loved and cherished and saved and could have life in all its fullness, life for eternity. Mm -hmm. um, they could um, understand fully who they were in him. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that helps us to get, uh, get to grips with this whole conversation about motivation because we also know that Jesus was fully human, so came with all the brokenness that we know and experience, mm -hmm. and a lot of time ministered from that place of, of brokenness, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, he, I mean, he was, he was living in the brokenness of the world. He was yeah. born into the brokenness of the world, and he died yeah. in the brokenness of the world. So it, was, so it was interwoven through his life, which is actually one of the beautiful truths about the Christian faith, is that we don't have God who is so far removed from us, yeah. but we have God who, who we can actually relate to in the gift of Jesus, mm. um, which is actually amazing and yeah. unique yeah, um, yeah. in terms of, in terms yeah, of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think, um, I think what's interesting as well is to see where Paul's focus is. Because if, if Paul isn't saying our motivation doesn't matter, um, then what is he saying? I think what we find he's saying, and we see this throughout his ministry, is that for him, the most important thing is that Jesus is proclaimed. Mm. So, so what we have here is in, in these verses from 15 through to 18, is that um, even though some people are, are coming at the proclamation of Christ from false motives for Paul the fact that Christ is being proclaimed is something to be celebrated mm. um, it might not be ideal in fact if if motives aren't right it's not ideal but nevertheless Jesus is being spoken of and that is a good thing yeah. um, now I, th I find that quite challenging to get my head around because yeah. I actually I think our motivation is really really important mm. um, um, because when, in our context, when we share who Jesus is, when we proclaim Christ, actually it's not just through our words, but it's through how we live, mm. through our actions, it's through how people see us outwork our lives. So, so if on Sunday, we're both preachers, if on Sunday we're standing here and, 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 and proclaiming Christ, but then the rest of our week is not lived in a, in a Christ-like way, then, then that, that's not ideal, is it? That's not the way that God calls yeah. us to live our lives. So I think there's some interesting stuff to unpack here. Yeah. Um, it's that yeah. question of what we've said a lot from the platform over the last few months, really, that uh, certainly you've said it a lot, that God sees the heart. God always yes. sees the heart. Yeah. And there's the question of, well, if, if the heart's not right, but the action is, 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 that, is that okay? If the heart's right, but the action's not right, is, is that yeah. okay? Yeah. How, how do we wrestle with that stuff for today? Yeah. And what, I, I, I guess one of my questions coming at this is, what are some of the false motives that people would preach Christ from yes. in, in this day and age? Yeah. 
maybe, I mean, and maybe they're the, exactly the same false motives that were present here. Yeah. Money, perhaps. Yeah. Um, ego, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, Paul's very clear about um, envy and rivalry and selfish ambition as being some of them. Absolutely, and I think I think we can easily fall into the trap of of, of not having right motives. Mm. I, I think I think each one of us have probably been there at one point or another. I have certainly, and um, and and that's why I think again picking up what what you pointed out is is. Um, the, the words that we have in Philippians 2, we don't want to jump too far mm. ahead, but actually the, the call to imitate Christ um, is key. Um, because as, as Christians, we're, we're journeying, hopefully, we're journeying closer to the heart of God, mm. closer to recognizing more and more about how God would have us live, what God's will is for us, and for our time, for our energy, for, for everything that we are. And, and so if we, if we cling on to the call to imitate Christ, then, then that's got to be a really strong place yeah. from which we then are able to journey with our motives in a way that is godly. Yeah, and ultimately, life lived with a godly motivation is life in all its fullness, yeah. I guess. It's not some sort of second-rate, um, like, knockoff type life. It's a... Yeah. a God invites us into a fullness of life that comes when we mirror the heart, the character, the actions of Christ in, yes. in how we, we choose to live. So I, I want to end with uh, just reading verse 27, um, which I think really uh, speaks into what you've heard Sam and I talking about. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel. So that challenge to live our lives in a manner worthy of the gospel, I think really speaks into this issue of proclaiming Christ and our motivation. So, uh, some questions uh, are there for you. Please uh, have a look at them. Chat uh, within your group around them and see where you get to with your conversations.